Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel even better. Spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Whew. All right, like my previous few episodes, I'll be doing my best with the pronunciations here. I relied on Google Translate to provide them and I created my own phonetic spelling to help me do my best. I'll definitely stumble a bit, but it should sound correct. I'll put the actual words in the lower third. All right, today's show is the last show of Portuguese wines from the Alentejo region. The previous five shows were one set of wines. These two wines are on their own set. I'm doing both in one episode, mainly because the information is the same for both wines, and I'm not going to go through all the history of the winery. Plus, good Lord, I'm, I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> it's like... 4, 12 in the morning, and I got to be at work at 1.30 in the afternoon. Speaking of the winery, it is the Esperam Winery again. I reviewed one of their wines from episode 23, so a few episodes ago. Feel free to watch that one for their overall history, additional info, and Google Earth videos. This wine is from their Manchevelu label. I also reviewed the 2000 White Wine uh, under the 1337 Wine brand. Links are in the description. Remember I said that Portuguese can sound like Italian? Well, there you go. Montevelo. Even though it's Montevelo. Mon Montevelo, right? That's how it looks. Montevelo. Anyway, it was launched in 1982 and refers to the mountains near the Cadadoji Reservoir. Now, Cadadoji actually means charity. Anyway, the reservoir is located right next to the winery. That's the big lake from episode 23's video. Now, I did a, a picture from Google Earth to show you what it looks like or show you the whole thing. Anyway, they wanted to produce a wine that was at a more accessible price point. Now, it's actually sourced from grapes throughout the region from multiple growers. Many have been growers for the winery for over 15 years. All these growers practice sustainable farming. Here are the stats for the wines. First, we have the 2019 Edoji do Esperam Montevelo Branco. Branco is Portuguese for white. It is part of the Alentejerno IGP. Is 40% Antam Vaz, 40% Operio, and 20% Perum. 18 years of average vine age. The soil is granitic schist and clay. All stainless steel. No mention of any malolactic, but um, is also bottled in January of 2020. 14% ABV. Total acidity is 6.38 grams per liter. pH is 3.28, and the residual sugar is 2 grams per liter. All right, the next wine is the 2019 Edoji de Esperam Montevelu Chintu. It is also part of the Alentejano IGP. 40% Aragones, 35% Trincadera, 20% Turiga Nacional, and 5% Syrah. Average vine age again, 18 years. The same soil, granitic schist and clay. It is an all stainless steel uh, with three months of aging. And then it's bottled in February of 2020. Now it's 13.5% ABV, total acidity 6.30 grams per liter, pH is 3.67, and the RS is 2.1 grams per liter. All right, just a quick note here. Notice that the TAs are almost the same. However, the pH has a pretty big margin. I know 0.39 may not seem like a lot, but it's actually almost a four-fold difference due to pH being a logarithmic scale. pH is a measurement of the strength of all acids. The TA, or total acidity in the EU versus Tritatable acidity, basically tartaric in the U.S., is a measurement of the amount of acids. Even though the EU is total acidity, it's still not measuring all of the acids, just the ones that affect taste. Whereas pH is all of them, which is important in relation to potential oxidation and spoilage. One doesn't necessarily correlate to the other. Confused? It can be. I, I even confused myself just now. Even I have to review these, just like I did for this episode. Since I'm writing a script before tasting the wines, one explanation that I can think of for the similar TAs is that the red wine went through malolactic fermentation. 
So while its TA may be almost the same, the pH went up due to higher levels of lactic acid, which is a less tart acid. Basically, both TAs can be the same, but the strength of those acids is where pH comes in. Lower pH equals higher tartness. It's an inverse relation. So the lower the pH, the higher the acid, the higher the pH, the lower the acid, and that correlates to tartness or how much your mouth waters. Now, I may have all this wrong, but that's how I read the numbers. It's still pretty high for a red wine from, from what I see. Anyway, I'll have a few links in the description that gives you a better explanation of all the differences of pH and TA versus TA. All right, enough of that science. Let's get into the wines so then I can go to sleep. All right, hopefully I didn't put you to sleep. No matter what, I've been having a ton of fun doing these wines and this white wine should be a palate cleanser. Just being a white wine alone. Plus, with all that science stuff about TAs and pHs, this should be, you know, by its nature of being a white wine, should be the higher acid wine. So it should be the palate cleanser, just in general. Fun fact, I've if I mentioned before, somewhere along the line, in Burgundy, when you do wine tastings there, it is not uncommon for them to taste you on the red wines first and then taste you on the white wines. Now, mainly you're talking Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. So the Pinot Noir, you know, is not a big, bold wine anyway. You're not blowing your palate out like drinking a Napa Cab. But what they tell me, and I kind of believe them on this. I mean, I pretty much believe them, is that if you go from red to white, it makes the white wines, uh, enhances the flavors of the white wines. So it makes them not taste better than they really are, but it allows you to, to taste them better. All right, but I'm gonna go traditional white then red. All right. Wow, refreshing to smell something other than red, black, and blue fruit. Um, nothing wrong with all those. They were really great, but. So I'm getting that kind of orange, peach, nectarine, kind of, you know, the richer type of, of, of citrus and other just like uh, regular fruits, I guess, you know, white wine fruits. Not like your typical lemon, lime, grapefruit type of stuff. Not like all those, not that, that kind of citrus, but orange, a bit of melon, cantaloupe. All of it's, you know, ripe in nature. Not overly ripe. It's also a bit of vanilla. Like there's almost like this like creamsicle thing going on, but I might be just, I don't know. It might be my, my senses are just kind of getting out of whack right now. It's because I really don't remember major oak aging and all this stuff. No, there's none. It was all stainless. So the vanilla must be, it vanilla's on my imagination. Uh, there's no, there's no oak aging in this thing. But it's definitely very fruit forward and fresh in the fruit. You know, it's that orange, that peach, guava. I think that's why I'm, it seems weird, but I think that's what I'm confusing with vanilla is actually guava. Because guava can have that kind of a, I don't know. It just, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try to explain it. All right, I just gonna taste this thing because I think it's gonna taste really good. So first of all, totally, totally a palate cleanser. Did I mention the suggested retail price of both these wines is 10 bucks? I didn't, but it was in the lower third anyway. It was in the, it was not lower third, it was in the, um, the sidebars. So everything I described as far as like the fruits, totally there. Orange, guava, mango, little peach. It's really refreshing. Um, it's, it is really cleansing the palate. I was, that's what I was hoping for. I was really hoping it was gonna, so I was gonna need some palate cleansing right there. And, and like everything's like enhanced a little bit. There isn't really anything herbaceous out of it. <clears throat> There's nothing really green out of it. It's just like a really nice, just ripe fruit. And that's just all it is. Um, but it's fresh and it's, it's really tastes good. And the acidity is 
pretty high. I mean, my mouth is watering a lot. Alcohol is like totally like, like what? Um, it's really refreshing. <clears throat> I was going to say something I forgot because I was distracted by acid. Yeah, there's just like a ripeness of fruit. So it gets like a, a slightly sweet type of taste, even though it's not sweet. I mean, it's not, it's, it's a dry wine. It's really refreshing. Like this is totally a porch pounder. Even if it's like, how much was 41 degrees outside? Totally. Like I could, I could absolutely just sip on this all day long. And that's what it's intended for, right? Accessible, easy to drink. You're not supposed to, you know, you don't need to like seriously think about it. This one's absolutely delicious. All right, let's get into red wine. All right, so we're back to like the blue, black, and red fruits. More blue and black on this. Blueberry, blackberry, touch of red raspberry. So here's the thing. No oak on this, right? But I'm getting like those, I'm getting like the type of spices you get from an oak aging. So that's actually just part of the grape. All right. So there is a touch of like that baking spice type of thing. Not vanilla. I don't get any vanilla, but it's also like this kind of jam jelly thing going on. I don't know if there's like any type of carbonic maceration going on. So it can kind of give you like a, some of a bubble gum type of thing. But I think there might be some carbonic on this. Which makes sense based upon how it's made in all stainless and all that. But it's like a freshness. It's almost like a nouveau kind of... Um, almost like a, a Beaujolais Nouveau type of thing. I mean, it's, it's bottled really quickly after fermentation, which is what Nouveau is. It's bottled even faster than what this is, but similar idea. You have a freshness of, of smell. And it's just pure fruit. Like, yeah. It smells better than Nouveau, by the way. Totally quaffable wine. Easy to drink. It's really, really dominant on the raspberry. A little bit of earth to this. Yeah, a little touch of like a little earth, a little bit of complexity. Not super complex, but just enough. It's, I think you need a little more food on this. I, I couldn't just like just sit on the patio or the porch and just like pound it like the white wine. But it's absolutely a pleasant wine. You could bring it to the pool. You could just, you could, I, I didn't talk about any pairings, but this is like, you could just pair whatever you want, like pizza, burger, like burgers. Absolutely. The fruit isn't like super, super sweet tasting uh, or ripe tasting, but it's got, it's got some like just really fresh, young, just picked fruit type of thing. So again, kind of nouveau, but definitely better tasting. Yeah, there's like a spiciness to it. It's good. So my phone here said low power mode and it is a battery case too. So that's my cue to be like, you should buy the wine, 10 bucks, both of them. They taste really good. Yeah, buy it. Anyway, that's going to do it for today's show. Again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and tell your friends. Until next time, I'll see you later. I'm going to bed.